Cult Comedy Pod with me, Tony Basnett, joined as always. <laughs> Why'd you sound so upset by it? <laughs> I tried to do it excited and <laughs> just got it so wrong. Joined as always by the brilliant Tony Wright. Hello, Tony. How are you? I am grand. How are you? I'm all right, you know. As I, for anyone who has just joined us, welcome aboard. We talk about a different cult every single week. This week, we decided that we were going to do Chen Tao. Yeah, these were. Uh, uh, the funnest, I think. This is... The silliest. Yes. This was the palate cleanser we needed after doing Waco. Yeah. So this, if you are expecting another heavy downbeat one, not today. Today, this is nothing but... I mean, joy? It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's... Uh, I, I always do these episodes and think, okay, when's it going to get bad? Like, when, when's the horrible stuff going to happen? And it never really happened. This one may... Yeah, this one was a lot of fun. As always, thank you for coming back and listening. If you've not listened to the previous episode, they're all wherever you're currently listening to this. If you like what we do, we are on Patreon. Tony Rates' final ever show is up on there if you want to go and watch that. We've got the episodes get released early, and it really supports us to keep doing this. So if you want to, £3 a month minimum. There's more if you want to, and if you can, you'll get everything for as little as £3 a month. If you want us to give you a shout-out at the end of each episode as well, just join at £10 tier. Yeah. Um, we also, on the sort of higher tiers, offer, like, uh, monthly Ask Me Anythings and we'll put outtakes and stuff on Patreon. It's going to be great. There's a lot of outtakes. <laughs> There's so many outtakes. The fact that it took two attempts to record that line. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to be there. It's all there. Uh, and you know what? Whilst we're here, let's crack on. This week's episode's Chen Tao. Yay. Okay, this might be one of the most fun that we ever get to do. I'm looking forward to this one. Here we go. So the story starts in 1955. If you're wondering, 1955, it's the year the first Guinness Book of Records was published. Disneyland opened in California and Winston Churchill retired. Amazing. I know, obviously, this is not the, the course of the episode, but the first Guinness Book of World Records really interests me Hit because me. I want to know just how shit are the records. It's the first ever ones, right? This is Darren. He can hula hoop four times in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's what, like, oh, the most tins opened in like a minute. Two. Two who's tins. Got, who's got the longest nails? It's Sarah. They're three inches. <laughs> Who can jump the most times in an hour? Me, Michael Guinness. (laughs) Is is Michael Guinness the actual person that invented Guinness World Records? No. (laughs) Guinness Book of Records were actually invented by the book Guinness to keep people drinking in their pubs. It was something that they could read so they'd keep drinking Guinness. Yeah. Fact, motherfuckers. Uh, You're not lying to me because... you said it very convincingly, so I'm, I'm, I believe it. I've been told that as fact. I have no idea if right, it's true, okay. but it sounds good. Sounds amazing. Uh, yeah. The one I do know is Michelin stars are given. The reason it's Michelin is that they would give them to people when they were at roadside services, so they had something to read and places to drive. So right. if you've got Michelin star restaurant, it's literally we help people drive to go and eat at this prick. And yet you don't get one if your food is rubbery. <laughs> Hun Ming Chen was born April 22nd, 1955, in Peipu, South Taiwan. Now, growing up, his parents, uh, his father was a farmer before moving on to become a merchant, and his mother stayed at home to raise it. His parents followed many customs of Chinese folk religion. They were Buddhists, but religion wasn't that strict in their household. This just feels like an everyday story. This isn't yeah. your average cult starting. And what we do find out is that his mother died of a stroke when he was very young and his dad died just a few years later. Is this the start to the story of a cult? Or is this the latest Batman film? <laughs> Little are known about humming until his university years he kept very quiet because he was a child <laughs> they're not really making press a lot i mean if like we knew so much about him in his childhood years i'd be very concerned about the person who found that out 
it's that weird thing where you go, do you know how bad you've got to be for me to be able to go, age nine, this happens. <laughs> and I promise you there are cults we get to where by age nine you go, a cult is the nicest thing this person was going to do. Yeah, I feel like we've already talked about some people where they are, as a child, already harrowing. <laughs> so, Hon Ming Chen is good in my books, for the time being. A little is known until his university years where he studied social science. And apart from that, even with his growing up, he was known as an atheist. He went on to get a bachelor's in political science. He got a master's in social science. He really just wants to look at society, how it's meant to be and how it's meant to be understood. Because, you know, with no parents growing up, you want to look at everything and go, well, how do I understand this? What, what, what's meant to happen? I didn't really have the money to look at it from a high tower with a big bright light shining his logo on. <laughs> but he wanted to understand how society was meant to be because he didn't have the parents to teach him that. He was really good at university and in 1983 he got a job as an associate professor and he stayed there for like 10 years becoming a professor of pharmacology and science. So for like, apart from obviously... Losing his parents at a young age was quite... I imagine it's going to be like a, a leading trauma and what leads on. But so far, he's lived quite a normal life. He's done pretty well Yeah, he's himself. doing good. He's doing good. He's he studied. He's got a good job. And he's quite far into his life already, just sort of like living. And he's it's, not done anything weird of note yet. You know what? I feel like he is smashing his life because both parents died. If only one of them died, I feel like he'd have gone off the rails earlier because he might have blamed the other one. Yeah. Whereas both died, he's gone, I've got two options here. I can either go and try and be an Oliver. Uh, <laughs> please, sir, do you have more food? Or I can just knuckle down and try. And he has. He's done everything he needs to. He spent a lot of time at the university. He was there over 10 years. He became an actual professor. Now, while he was working there at the age of 37, this is where he claimed he heard a voice in his head telling him to lead a religious life. Okay, so I spoke too soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. way <laughs> oh, too quick on this one. <laughs> well, there's me being like, oh, he seems like a sound dude, and he's <laughs> he's got Jesus in his brain. You know what? With everything that's gone on, I feel he's really got this together. And then he heard God. Yeah, well, well there we go. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> Imagine if that's why I brought you here. This man lost his parents at an early age. Had a really good career, a really good life. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he heard the voice of God. He started reading a lot of religious text. Everything from Buddhism to Christian. He started reading everything. And after all of his research, he decided to join a UFO cult. Oh, okay, so zero to one hundred. This... I'm I'm all for it. Right, I've strapped in. I've put my seatbelt on. I'm ready for this episode now. <laughs> Scotty, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was due to divine intervention. He wanted to find some level of God. He wanted to get his revelation. But let's be honest, this is a guy who literally has no family, no wife, no children. And he has gone, I'm going to go and look at the religious nerds because he's alone. Right, I'm going to clear this up so quickly. When I say religious nerd, I mean nerds as in UFO and religious as in cult. <laughs> 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 I am not putting nerds in anything lower than the word UFO. <laughs> yeah, for those, uh, all of you listening on the podcast, Tony Wright just shot me a look that said... You know what? You can have a pop at our listeners, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so he joined a group run by Yu Cha Chen. She already had a few hundred followers. She preached a mixture of Buddhism and UFOlogy. She's telling everyone about a reincarnation, but also UFOs. It's such a weird mix. Yeah, that is just picking and choosing, isn't it? Uh, you could come back as an animal. Or Armageddon. Take your pick. <laughs> You could come back, but like somewhere else a million miles away and then come and visit us in your equivalent to a, an alien's Ford Fiesta <laughs> in the sky. The one thing we do know about this group is that apparently she charged really large fees to her followers to, you know, a cult leader charging Standard. really large Can fees you to her that? followers. What, just ripping them off and taking their money. Now, 1993, at this point, 
Chen is 40. And at this point, he's decided that her fees and, you know what, I'll quote him on this. He said her fees were predatory and immoral. I say the same thing about Spotify, to be honest. (laughs) He said that she was a heavenly devil in human guise and told her this to her face and left the group. He's quite poetic. I like it. Heavenly devil in, like, human disguise. That's quite magic, isn't it, as a sentence? It sounds like it's come from one of the songs in Rocky Horror. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I hope there's more of that to come. Mm. Uh (laughs) Oh, uh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's how it goes. It's all just poetry. That's how we go on from here. Pure loner's poetry. Now, obviously, he didn't want to leave the group on his own. He didn't want to give up on his friends, his belief, or the social aspect of what he had. So when he left, he took about a dozen of her followers, who were also disillusioned, just on the fees. Which, when it comes to a cult, if your only issue is, this costs too much... (laughs) I think it's on the lighter end of a cult. And that's how Apple Music was born. (laughs) That's how fucking Apple was born. (laughs) Is that too much? No, no, no. You need to pay £30 to be able to use the headphones we sold you a year ago. (laughs) Welcome. What he did was he went and formed his own group. He formed his own group and he called them the Soul Light Resurgence Association. Again, poetry. Poetry, but when it comes to the name of a cult, it's fucking dreadful. Oh, it's t- again, cults, every episode, especially their original name. Because none of them seem to have like one name all the way through. They start with something, they start to work on it throughout the years. Their first name is always absolutely atrocious. Spoiler alert, it's not how the group ends. <laughs> So he formed his group and he opened a church in Tainan City. He gained momentum fast and his followers were highly professional people. This man had come from being a professor. So he got professors following him. He got engineers, doctors. They all came to his church because they trusted him. He was a higher class. He wasn't your man in the street shouting, Ah, well, UFOs are going to save us all. (laughs) This man's been a professor for 10 years. They respected what he had to say. So far, apart from, you know, getting to the the ripe age of 37 and joining a UFO cult, he's not done anything that is, like, wild to me. I have never in my life seen the phrase, apart from joining a UFO cult, get washed over so quickly. Is it my fault he's so plain? (laughs) He's just a normal dude. A normal, lonely, alien dude. (laughs) He is a Comic-Con away from no cults happening. (laughs) (laughs) He started to grow the movement. He asked his most faithful followers to travel around Taiwan and open like satellite churches, just little ones that would preach the word, but they weren't central to him. He convinced a friend to open a practice site in the north. And by 1996, he had four churches established. Oh, he's moving quite fast then. He wants people to hear about his word of God. And he really started to push it because 1996 is the year that he also self-published his first book. That was called The Practical Evidence and Study of the World of God and Buddha. Okay, so probably about 30 words less than an Arctic Monkey song then, yeah? (laughs) Just, like, it's a book. Harry Potter, done, sold. The practical evidence, I'm out. You've fucking lost me. I mean, to be fair, Harry Potter and the practical evidence and study of the world of God and Buddha is is a book that, like, J.K. Rowling is about to write. (laughs) She's not basing anything on practical evidence. (laughs) His major beliefs for the group were all living beings began in a central vortex. After coming into existence, they passed into the material realm. Madonna song? (laughs) I'm in the material realm (laughs) from that central vortex. (laughs) After that, that's where they took the form. I'm sorry. (laughs) You can't stop thinking about Madonna now, can you? (laughs) I can't believe we're not enough podcasts in for me to be singing. (laughs) When they enter the material realm is when they took the form of humans, animals, angels, or devils, and they entered the world like a virgin. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) 
he preached that humans and animals had three souls. Right. That one in the body, one in the mind, and their spiritual light. Okay. Three souls. Three souls. Now, apparently, <laughs> your spiritual... I would have thought it would have been your soul, my soul, arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've met people with one soul, <laughs> and it's always the last one. It's, ne- it's never yours or mine. <laughs> Feels like they're ruining yours and mine with their... Yeah. <laughs> with the third soul, what he said was the spiritual light, the more that you had, uh, the better you get when you're reincarnated. Okay. So you big up your spiritual light, mm-hmm. and you get you get to come back better. Now, if you increase it to a state of enlightenment, you can escape karmic reincarnation altogether. Now, he has completely... I'm I'm not saying this lightly. He has absolutely fucking ripped this from Buddhism. Yes. (laughs) Do better in life, you come back better. Do better in life, you come back better. You do well enough, you've smashed it, pal. It's a lot (laughs) like the Edinburgh Festival. You just want to do well enough, you don't need to go back. (laughs) And it costs a fucking fortune. <laughs> he might have taken this from Buddhism, but he did have some major differences. <laughs> uh, Chen preached that two obstacles stopping you from reaching enlightenment were outside souls. They're people who died unexpectedly of, or had horrible deaths. They live outside reincarnation and they drain humans of their light. Right. That's based on old Taiwanese folklore, but like, you get murdered and you don't get to be reincarnated. It's no fault of your own, but all of a sudden you're just out there fucking draining people. Yeah, so what, what does you're that mean? You're essentially Spike from Buffy. <laughs> Hoping for a new Okay, that soul. makes a lot of sense. Because I was like, well, if you don't reincarnate, then are you not just... Isn't that not the, the karmic realisation or whatever? No, because you're the opposite. You didn't even get a chance to realise life. Oh, okay. I instantly regret calling them Spike from Buffy because what he called them was vampire ghosts. Incredible. The other side of it is people who possess people to make the world <laughs> bad and they try and make the world a worse place. And he called them, and I shit you not, the exact phrase he used, King Satan's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's lost his poetry at this point. Has <laughs> he? King Satan's vampire ghosts? Vampire ghosts. He I mean, has really doubled down on being a 13-year-old emo in his <laughs> 40s. <laughs> he's just watched one Jared Leto movie. <laughs> oh. The thing is, though, is he said that King Satan were responsible for the world's worst suffering and troubles. All of these apparently end in nuclear holocaust. Okay. All of them. Every single one. Every single one of them. <sighs> He said, existence of history has already witnessed over 888,800,000 tribulations. Five great tribulations, and the first of which, I will let you know, was waged by dinosaurs. (laughs) Oh, those naughty beings. (laughs) It's just... Is anyone the king of Satan's more than dinosaurs? This is the only kind of shit that you can get away with if you're a professor. You can't stand there as a man on a box in a street going, man, those dinosaurs really brought on some troubles on themselves. <laughs> you have to be like, I've been a professor for 10 years and the first of the tribulations was the dinosaurs. Yeah, I... And that's when our souls go, <laughs> oh my God, you're so right. I want to, to go back to uni so I can get a social science degree and then just tell everyone, I tell you what, those triceratops, two-faced bitches. <laughs> Tyranna, oh no, you didn't. (laughs) Apart from the dinosaurs, the rest of them all battled in the area known as modern day Israel. And he said that the next one was coming soon. Oh, I do need to point out as well. Another battle in Israel. Another, yeah, yeah. Uh, He did say the other four great tribulations all ended in nuclear holocaust. Right. How many nuclear holocausts are you aware of? Is this a trick question? Yes. Okay. Holocaust. Nuclear holocaust as in wiping out the world of people. How many of them are you aware of? None. Correct. Good. (laughs) 
Because I'm like, did I not witness a nuclear holocaust? Did I miss it? Was it Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, did I miss the nuclear holocaust by being at the quiz again? <laughs> That's the thing. You said the next one was coming soon, which is always a good way of making people listen. That's that's cult 101, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, cult lesson number seven of this podcast <laughs> is you tell them the end of the world is coming. And you tell them it's coming soon. You don't put a date on it because you no. all know what happens when you put a date on it's it. It's like a debut in the WWE. It's not happening any time that we know, <laughs> but we know it's going to happen. <laughs> the thing is, you put a date on it, you build expectation, and that can be ruined. Yeah. So... And then suddenly, one day when you least expect it, the Funkasaurus appears. <laughs> King Satan himself. And just as Funkasaurus was, we are on a roll. Let me continue. <laughs> He assured his followers not to be afraid because true believers had survived the last four holocausts. God had rescued all of them in a UFO that Chen called his God plane. (laughs) And that is the first sentence I'm going to tell you in this episode where as it goes on, word by word, it gets fucking better. Oh, this, yeah, I'm here for it. Oh, no, no, no. The reason we don't remember the last nuclear holocaust is because we weren't here. They wiped out all of the bad ones. Oh, okay. And God saved them all on a UFO. And they've wiped out all of the bad ones four times. Four times. Right. And then one of the, the nuclear holocausts. Well. Yeah, one of the nuclear holocausts was the Big Bang. I mean, you know what? I think we deserved one for the Big Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Chen was just like, 20 seasons of the same fucking joke. Just on the phone to Putin. We need to get rid of... The guy that created this show and Two and a Half Men. <laughs> he's done enough damage to the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When God says he's going to save all men, he doesn't mean he's going to save all men, 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 <laughs> men, 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 men. <laughs> I just adore that this podcast, all of the jokes are so stupid. <laughs> We've never made an intelligent joke at all. It's all just so, so silly. I just feel that if we're going to go for something like this, we can't be like, hey, hey, Johnstown! Let me give you an entire breakdown of what happened. I am not skilled enough to understand, (laughs) but I am skilled enough to go, men, 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 (laughs) men, 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 men. (laughs) After being saved by the UFO, the true believers just waited for all of the Holocaust and the nuclear radiation to settle. They all waited on another planet. And then when it was all cleared, they just come back to Earth. Right, okay. Nice little holiday on Mars. Yeah. That'll do, won't it? Take God's private plane. It's Poofo. (laughs) God's private UFO. And people believe this. He was a professor. There's no reason not Oh, I had plenty of professors at uni that talk shite. Oh, I had one. (laughs) Because I I did sound technology, and I know, having deleted the entire recording of the last episode (laughs) in one button, you might not believe that. On my first day of university, one of the lecturers said, one person in this room will get a job. The rest of you will not work in this field. (laughs) <laughs> my favourite thing that ever happened was I once did a gig and my professor was in the house band and we had to sign to get paid at the same time and his band got paid less than I did incredible and my favourite bit of all of that evening was that I forgot to turn the microphone on <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're on less money you bullshit <laughs> I mean, it's a real job, let alone your side hustle. <laughs> so Chen promised that if they followed him, they would get a seat in the UFO. How many seats are going? How big's this UFO? It's big enough. It's a cool amount. Apparently, God did have it's... more. Oh, oh, the fortunately, the UFO is just about the, the right amount for the seven hundred and fifty people we have. That's great. That's the thing. It apparently God had numerous planes, but there was the God plane and God's planes. You've got to work harder to be on God's plane. Yeah. But then you can get on God's plane. You can get on God's dodo, but you can't get on God's 747. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get in God's bumper car, but you're the passenger. (laughs) So now they need him to survive, though. He warned he was the only one that they could trust. 
He said 99% of Buddhist temples were run by vampiric spirits. <laughs> Don't listen to him. He's a vampire. <laughs> he just wants me to meditate and try harder in life. Vampire. Have you seen him during the day? I mean, it's 9am you... every Sunday. <laughs> This like, this guy must be charismatic enough to convince people that Buddhists are vampires. The most chill people in the world. He said a lot of this. He said the Bible was partly written by King Satan. So they needed him to tell them which part of the Bible they could trust. So he's going to write his own... Is he getting making another book? Welcome to cult rule number 36. <laughs> cult leader tells you which bits to believe because it fits their narrative. Yeah. Most of them don't claim that they were written by King Satan's and the bad bits were devil words. But it's a banging <laughs> way of putting it. Yeah. Again, everything he's come up with, all of these people, all of these like the King Satan's devil words and stuff, it's an album that I'm definitely going to buy. I'm fairly sure I've seen a punk band named after all of it. <laughs> now, we laugh about it, but by 1997, he had thousands of followers. Thousands. Okay. So what has he been... Run- so was it 1999, you say, 97? 1997 is okay. where we're at now. He started this in 1993. 93? So yeah, four years he's done well. He's got thousands of followers. That is a TikTok account I could get involved with. Yeah. Now that he's got the followers... He changed the name of the group because what good cult doesn't want to change their name at any point? Yeah. He changed the name of the group to Chen Tao, which, which translates as True Way. This is so much better than the Soul Light, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. I forgot it because it was too wordy. The too Association shy. of the Light of the Loving of the Lord of the... No, 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 no. no. The Chen Light Tao. Switch of the Souls... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, apparently there is rumours of something being about, like, God, Cloud, UFO, as well as another name. But then they settled on Chen Tao, True Way. Yeah. Because that is the true way to survive. It works. I don't hate it. One of the other names that they used for the group was God Saves the Earth Flying Saucer Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> If that's not the name for a Frisbee World Championship, I don't know. <laughs> this is my... It's not my one issue with cults, but this is one of my issue with cults. It's why sometimes you need a writing room. <laughs> You've got to bounce it off someone else. Like... I want a cult that's run by multiple people so then they can have these conversations. So it's not just one person who doesn't have someone being like, maybe the God Saves the Flying Saucer Foundation is not a good idea for a name. No, because it's uh, It's just, it's not snappy. <laughs> you just see it flying by and you think, not for me. <laughs> he began preaching that the only land of refuge was in North America. Now, to survive the Holocaust, they had to move from Taiwan to San Dimas in California. Sounds to me he just wants a holiday. I have tried so hard to find out his reasoning for this. And all I've got is that he said, Holy land. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Hollywood, mate, and you're in the wrong location. <laughs> and the thing is, though, it's early 1997, he sets off and he takes followers with him. He might have had thousands in Taiwan. 25 of them moved with him. <laughs> now, he registered the group in USA as God Salvation's Church, and yet, despite having thousands of followers, a lot of them couldn't justify a 14 hour flight. Oh, you've got to love the laziness. 14-hour flight for salvation. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's one flight. Right, genuine question. Right here, right now. Yeah. If somebody told you you had to go to Leeds to be saved from an apocalypse, would you? I mean, I've been to Leeds, so no. It's R4 on a Friday. Oh. You've got to get that train. Yeah, we're doing trains. Yeah, no, Um, no thank you. All right, you can do the Megabus if you want. You know what? It's for your salvation. Take a National Express. <laughs> At R4 on a Friday, are you? I think about it. Yeah, and I imagine a couple of thousand of them thought about it yeah. before thinking, 14 hours, not even first class. God's not got us first class. You mean I've not got the best films? Wait, you mean to say we're not stopping in Dubai either? <laughs> Dubai either. <laughs> Now, his numbers grew while he was over there. He got his numbers up to about 150 within two years. 
Chen continued his belief that God would save them from here in his UFO. This is one year after the film Mars Attacks came out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a UFO coming and it's good. Like, it's, it's also like, how, how did he find that this part of California is where the UFOs come in? Of all the, like, the entire globe, this is the one location he's settled on. Or was it like a God was Uber and he's just strolling the city waiting for the one place that he could get I connected to a driver? <laughs> I don't even think it's that from what I've seen. He's based this on something he's thought. So it's always that bit in my head where it's like something in his, something's triggered it in his brain. Where it's like something's happened and now he's got a following. And he's gone, oh, that place. I could go there. Like, there's a place in Norway I really want to visit. And I always have with no reason whatsoever apart from it was on a TV show once. And I went, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. If I've got thousands of people and I can go, right, we need to relocate because God says, there's a bit of me that goes, I'd go there. I just think he's got this idea in his head where he's gone, this is where we need to go. But like, when obviously the UFO never turns up, what do you say then? Oh, Sa- San Dimas. Oh, I meant Diego. Oh, what am I like? I really... Can't wait to tell you the rest of this story. Oh, incredible. So during this, they're in San Dimas and Chen starts claiming that he's speaking to God on a daily basis. Lovely. How is he speaking to God? I mean, obviously it's where God wants him to be, but well, that's not how conversations work. <laughs> Chen claims that he was speaking to God through a diamond studded ring that he wore. Oh, Beautiful. I imagine it was. My favourite fact of all of this is that Chen used to wear the ring inside so the diamond was on the inside because, and again, I quote, it got better signal. (laughs) Hello, God, can you hear me? Hello? (laughs) Wait, one second. I'm just going through a tunnel at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So if this guy is talking to God through a diamond ring, Mr. T must be talking to every fucking Greek god. Yeah, yeah, he would do if he turned them the other way round. This one's Athena. This one's <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> this chain is Loki. <laughs> and if if he just turn him round, he could speak to all of them. His reception's <laughs> dreadful. Ah, <laughs> oh, and that that is during this podcast. An accent one of the two of us can do. (laughs) And none of you will know which one. (laughs) The power of audio. Uh, At least one person's going to go, and why is that posh London student doing those voices? (laughs) Because daddy said I can. (laughs) One of the other things that he was saying during this time is that you couldn't eat meat. Made the great vegetarian. (laughs) You know what? If you're going to, you're going to move yourself over to California, you've got to become vegetarian. How do you follow it up and make sure your followers believe in vegetarianism? He said, anyone that continued to eat meat will face retribution. Ooh. From the spirit world. (gasps) And they might be be visited in their dreams by the animals asking them what happened. (laughs) If I had a dream after eating like a burger and there's just a cow going, mate, I thought we were friends. <laughs> what, 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 what happened? There I was chewing some grass and now I'm in your head. In Westfield, Delphia, I was born and raised <laughs> eating grass. <laughs> I was having a grace. <laughs> it just... It's not even a cow looking at you eating their wife going, no! <laughs> Just getting snapped into existence to be like, you bitch. All that's happening is you're asleep and you're getting cussed out by the cast of Chicken Run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want that dream to happen. <laughs> And I'd do it again. (laughs) And I'd do it again. (laughs) Anyway, they've arrived in San Dimas. 
They've purchased a number of small homes in the area. Now, unlike a lot of cults, they're professors, they're doctors, they've got money. So they just buy homes in the area. And while they're sat there waiting for the UFO to come and save them, they start interpreting signs from God. Mainly what they were looking at is clouds and contrails left by planes. <laughs> but they were taken by the group and they were they were interpreted as signs of God and like, oh, look at that one. <laughs> that one looks like we'll all be saved soon. You know, like how, and that one looks like a turtle. You know how young couples are like, oh, look at that. That looks like Doc Cotton. <laughs> 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 I've never been good on dates. <laughs> Not claiming to be. I want to put butcher. <laughs> never had a second date. But the clouds, they just look like these old actresses from the UK. I, oh, all EastEnders. I can, I can tell you a Mike Reed cloud from 30 miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's all of the Mitchells. <laughs> it's just bumps. <laughs> My favourite thing about all of this is they're saying that they're looking at these contrails and they're signs from God. And again, they could be. And I wouldn't want to belittle them for it. But one time they saw something in the sky and said it was a sign from God. And they were like, oh, I wonder what those numbers mean. That must be a sign from God. <laughs> there was a skywriter that had written 007 to promote the new James Bond film. And they're like, tell us more, Jesus. That's beautiful. I, lo I, I love that so much. I will never belittle the rest of it. Believe in what you want. Read what you want into what you want. But if it says 007 and your first <laughs> thought is in dun 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 oh dun 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 God is actually... What? Who's going to fly the UFO? It's Shirley Bassey. <laughs> I just... It's really upsetting that if you would have found one of them on that day and they're like, oh, that is a sign from God. And you said, no, it's not. It is actually just an advertisement for the new Bond film. And their entire beliefs, oh, they wouldn't have been shaken, but they'd have been stirred. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> then in early 1997, you received another revelation. Oh. <gasps> What is it? If I gave you a thousand guesses, <laughs> you would never guess this. Is it more alien stuff? Not even slightly. Oh, okay. In this vision from God, God said that there was a reincarnation of Jesus living in Vancouver, Canada. He <laughs> said that he had to send his followers to find him right away. Naturally, Chen's followers said... What does the reincarnation of Jesus Christ in Vancouver look like? Yeah. And Chen responded, Jesus is six foot tall, 28 years old, and looks like Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that is, that's a quest, isn't it? North or south, east or west, the quest to if... find the man <laughs> of Lincoln. Go far. I respect that from Chen, though, because if he was just sort of like, oh, he's, you know, he looks like Jesus or... Like, oh, he's, uh, they didn't tell me what he looked like. They just told me where he was. That's bullshit. But if, if you just go, yeah, he's uh, six foot, looks like Abraham Lincoln, 28 years old, go. You're it's... like, oh, I've, I've got some, I've, I can work with that. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if that's the order that he gave them in. Is that he's six foot and the group went, oh, we'll find the six foot man in, in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, he, He's 28. Oh, we're looking for a man who looks 28. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm 32 and I got ID'd for a kind of monster the other day. People can't do ages Oh, can you well. imagine what a 28-year-old Abraham Lincoln would get? That's oh. the thing. And then he just drops Abraham Lincoln. And I think at, that's the point that the group as one went, ah, oh, we've got something to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. I, I do feel like if, they, if he'd have said, and he looks like Abraham Lincoln, if the group would have still looked back and gone... <laughs> oh, there's so many of them. I think he might have gone with a growth on his ear <laughs> <laughs> and one leg. Let's see. Chen just might be my mum talking to me about my biological father. <laughs> he's um, he's an African man. Yeah, okay. Uh, he was Muslim, right? 
Okay. It was, it was also called Muhammad. We've not narrowed it down at all. It's the most common name in the world. <laughs> Just, um, he's from abroad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheers, man. <laughs> so Chen sent him. He said they needed to find the new Jesus as they already had the reincarnation of Buddha within the group. And that the reincarnation of Jesus and Buddha needed to talk. Who was the reincarnation of Buddha? Good Have question. I missed this? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you hadn't, because Chen told his followers this when they weren't aware of it either. <laughs> <laughs> and get ready for the roller coaster that is the next sentence. Chen said that the reincarnation of Buddha was a ten year old child of one of his followers. And he hadn't told the parents at any point before this. <laughs> the parents only found out that their child was the reincarnation of Buddha when Chen stood there telling them to go and find Abraham Lincoln in Canada. <laughs> also, the reincarnation of Jesus is a 28-year-old man who looks like Abraham Lincoln. The reincarnation of Buddha is a fucking 10-year-old. <laughs> What are they going to talk about? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. He hadn't told the parents. I want to know what, like, the philosophies of the reincarnation of Buddha would be. It's just know. sort of like, sit, sitting down is really fun and Lego is the best toy on earth. <laughs> when I come back, I want to be better. <laughs> <laughs> when think... I come back, I want to be a car. <laughs> well, you are the chubbiest of the group. Congratulations, <laughs> Buddha. <laughs> Transit van, maybe. <laughs> the group placed adverts in Vancouver in the local papers saying that they were looking for someone who looked like Abraham Lincoln, who was 28 and 6 foot. And I'll tell you now, they got no responses. That's surprising. I thought there might be one or two. Is it? Is that surprising that they went, we need to meet someone who looks like they're Abraham no, this Lincoln seems like because something... it's a thing we need? No, I, f I feel like Chen was blagging it so much and was, it's so far-fetched that I thought there would have been one dude that was like, hey, I'm 28 and look like Abraham Lincoln. I'm 5'11", actually, but... <laughs> You know, it's hey. But look at these sideburns. What's this? Is this like a what is this like a talent competition or something? <laughs> and Chen would be like wiping the sweat from his brow, like, ah, oh, we found him. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm so glad you actually found the Jesus that I sent you to look for. That is exactly what I needed you to do. <laughs> Thank you so fucking much. Just Abraham Lincoln's <laughs> Lee Lord just wandering up to the group. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago. <laughs> do you no remember my speech? No I might be doing Abraham Lincoln, still do padding. <laughs> remember when I got assassinated, eh? What a small crew of people. Me, John Lennon, JFK. They had no luck trying to find their Abraham Lincoln Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Which, after the Leelard impersonations, makes that joke so much worse. <laughs> I imagine anyone who's listened to this has no clue what Leelard is. Not in Christ, not in Lent. <laughs> <laughs> when they got nothing back, Chen just decided that the actual reincarnation of Jesus was... So, I'm nine... really sorry to interrupt, but my brain is just screaming, Garlic Chen! <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it because it was not Lee. <laughs> You're getting on the UFO, dickhead. <laughs> Please continue. Me nan, she needs a bungle to fall. <laughs> Ooh, never in my life have I thought, oh, it's a Taiwanese cult, let's see where, let's see where we go wrong. <laughs> This was it. I didn't at any, th at any point think it's like enough tribute act from Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> when they couldn't find Abraham Lincoln, 
<laughs> he said the actual reincarnation was a nine-year-old son of another cult member. Which is good, because now the reincarnation of Jesus and the reincarnation of Buddha can discuss Lego. <laughs> <laughs> He then decided later on down the line that he himself was the reincarnation of Joseph, you know, Jesus' stepdad. Has he cucked himself? He's absolutely not even taken God. Yeah, I, I thought he was about to say that, oh, no, I am I am Jesus or I am Buddha, but he's gone for the fucking side character. and He has set up the story, right? He could have made himself the main part and he's gone for the fella that got cheated on by his own wife with the... <laughs> this is a man... What who, a loser. What a, a loser. This is the thing. It's the difference between only child, youngest child, oldest child, and child who lost his parents early. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone, well, everything gets taken away. Might not, might as well not give myself anything good. <laughs> Can't be God. That'll only be taken away from me. Stepdad? Yeah, I'll do stepdad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go knock on all those indoors. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Don't worry, child Buddha. I'll find us a hotel. <laughs> it's all I'm good for. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, child Jesus, nice seeing you. We'll do Mackies at the weekend. <laughs> now, the press loved it. Because they'd put in the advert looking for their Abraham Lincoln because it was part of their... They needed it for their cult. The press were all over them. The press loved every second. During this time in America, and I should point out, it is not a great time to be a UFO cult. No. Uh, during this is time, there ever a great time to be a UFO cult? During this time in America, they moved there the day after the Heaven's Gate ended. If you're listening to this podcast... I'm fairly sure that you're aware of what Heaven's Gate is and what went on. The reason I'm saying it in this way is um, Tony Wright knows so little about cults. He doesn't know what happened in Heaven's Gate. And I promise you we are doing that episode because I really want to and really need to. Um, All you need to know is UFO cult in America, the day after Heaven's Gate ended, they're not fucking popular. Right, okay. I think that gives you some indication on the ending, but it doesn't tell you the story of them. It's normal cult ending, which is usually quite horrible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let, that's the dice we'll roll. <laughs> uh, some have said during this time that despite how badly he felt about being ripped off by his previous cult leader, he was asking followers for money to get the seat on the spaceship. He's in California, just like... Hey guys, bus fat. So wait, so originally people like would earn a seat on the the UFO. Yeah, yeah. But is he now asking people to pay for his ticket? And there's a, there's a chance that their way of earning it was oh, just I mean, paying. For a it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a lot like Tory Britain. Like you can work really hard and get one, or you can just you know slip a yeah. bit of green. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some said that he was extorting money, but I've not found a lot of basis for this, especially on why he left his last cult. Um, I mean, some were saying that he was brainwashing his followers. Like, what, really? He was brainwashing followers? The way that he got people to travel 14 hours by plane to join a fucking UFO cult? I mean, 15 people. But still, no way. Brainwashing? <laughs> Who saw that coming? I still In feel a like... cult podcast? No way. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Although I still think those people that went with him were just sort of like, well, we'll we'll go to America for a few weeks, catch some rays. It'll be nice, nice little holiday. <laughs> Literally a holiday. One of the things I'll give him credit for is when I follow his parents flew to America to request the return of their child because the child had gone with the dad. The dad had passed away, natural causes, so could be reincarnated. Good luck. See you on the next round. He died of natural cause. So he was allowed to be reincarnated. He He's was, not going to be yeah, a vampire yeah. ghost, no, is no, he? No, not vampire ghost. He was allowed to come back. He'll give another shot on the UFO next time. <laughs> His daughter was still in the group. She was 16. The other parent, the mother, who had stayed at home and then gone, I think that was a cult. Yeah. When they all went to America, she flew over after the partner died and went, I'd really like my daughter back. Uh, take her home. Everything's going to be all right. She arrived, got the police involved, especially after what had just happened in Heaven's Gate. Yeah. That wasn't good. So the parent was like, I need my child back. I don't want anything bad happening to my child. The police went in and Chen just went, 
Yeah, like she's free to leave. Nothing keeping anyone here. And the daughter went, I'm, I am absolutely free to leave. I just want to stay. And the mum basically went, oh. And she's yeah. like, we can still call. We can still call. We can still talk. We can still communicate. But I'm going to stay. That's mad. It, there was absolutely this no This doesn't ties. sound like cult behaviour. It's, it's so much more power down mentality of I know what's right than I need to hold you. Like yeah. When you've built thousands of followers, there is a real ease of going, ah, I can win more people. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't do it by force. But maybe that that's exactly what makes people stay. Yeah, you're not you're not the band guy, so you stay. Hey, with you them. you can leave if you want to. I I know what's up. Like I'll get you the seat on the UFO if you want to if you want to go in the UFO. But you're like, right, he is forty. He might use phrases like "I know what's up." <laughs> I am down. Hey, da- hey, hey cool kids. I'm down with the up. kids. I'm hip. I'm trendy. That <laughs> if you leave, that's whack. <laughs> but I know what's popping. Now, let's all put our flares on. So if you want to... some amber. <laughs> <laughs> wow, if you want to take a trip with me to space and nay-nay all the way... Well, then, I'm not going to be able to let you on board until you've taken a chill pill. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Am I right, guys? Am I right? I mean, the parent coming over, though, did... And alarm the press and because the parent went to speak to the police as well and that brought the press in and with what happened the press are going all over it and they're writing stories calling Chentao a doomsday cult so they're saying it'll end in murder or suicide they've seen it before yeah. spoiler alert for a later show but like, the followers didn't care they ignored it late in 1997 all of the negative press that they were getting Chen decided it was time to move again. This time it was time to move to Garland, Texas. I don't know. I don't know what happened in the sky, but apparently God hit Sky Roadworks and has been redirected. Yeah, I was just about to ask this. What? So they, the reason they went to California is because that was supposed to be where the UFO lands. And then suddenly he's like, we need to go because the UFO is not landing here. Apparently God saw a full moon. He thought it was a red light. He took a left. He tried to get round it. Ah, uh, God got diverted onto Snake's Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. God, God was stuck on the M1 for a while and went, you know yeah. what, eventually we'll just go by Stoke. That's why you don't travel at night. <laughs> go in the day. Like, they don't do roadworks in the day, God. You know now, that. Now, Chen did say there was a reason that he chose Garland, Texas. The reason he chose Garland, Texas is because... Garland sounds like Godland. What a shit theme park that is. Welcome to Godland. Everyone put your hands together and we'll all wait in this queue until (laughs) fuck all happens. (laughs) (laughs) So the group had to travel from California to Godland, Texas. Yeah. They travelled by bus and by car. They took the entire day. And by the day that they arrived, they'd bought 21 properties in the area. They've got money. Yeah, they're professors. They're doctors. They've got money. So they just walk in. They're like, yeah, we'll take 21 properties. And they all use their own money. The money's not centralised. It's not come through Chen. They've got their own funds. They're about to leave. Right. It's, yeah. It's the politest cult we're going to do for a while. Yeah. I get, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that he's... Uh... He's very okay with people like coming and going, but I think it's that looseness that like you can leave if you want to that makes people stay because they're like, if I was in a cult, I wouldn't be allowed to leave. And I'm not in a cult because I can leave if I want to, but I don't want to. Also, telling people that they're free to leave when they're a 14 hour flight from their home is a Mm -hmm. real easy thing to do. Probably more so now if you're in Godland. We're the only people you know. Yeah. 14 hours away. Like, <laughs> you can leave if you want, but we're in the middle of California. We're not next to LAX. Yeah. <laughs> we're not next to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so they buy up a lot of property. And that night, Chen ran a press conference because everyone's followed them down there. The press want to know what's going on. Yeah. The press want to see what this new group are up to and why they've moved to Texas. <laughs> So he made it clear that night that the group were not a suicide cult and that suicide was forbidden for members and gave them a brief overview of all of the group's beliefs. Is that a spoiler? Oh, for this group or for another one? 
for another well, for any group. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Suicide is a spoiler for some cults. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just after the uh, the after the the Heaven's Gate reference, I'm like, is this? Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some bits in this that I need to reference Heaven's Gate for, and um, yes, um, the end of Heaven's Gate was a mass suicide. Merry Christmas! That's your Christmas present from me. In two seasons' time, when we get to it, you'll have forgot. We'll have a lovely time. <laughs> um, so they, they they thought that that's what could be happening again. They thought they're all going to come down to Texas, commit suicide together, and that was going to be the end of the group. So he says that's not going to happen. He gave a brief overview of their beliefs, and. There's a real mix with the neighbourhood in Texas because some of the neighbours really weren't fans of them. They thought that... I mean, some of the neighbours just hated the fact that the press were there constantly. Yeah. Oh, my God, this new group, we've got to film it. And they, you're in a small part of Texas. You're not used to it. Some of them disliked the group because of... And it was how the group tried to fit in. So the group would wear white trainers... A white tracksuit, because that's what God would be wearing. All white. <laughs> and then they'd wear a white cowboy hat to fit in with the locals. I mean, this sounds like quite the outfit. Right? This sounds like an outfit I actually want to wear. It sounds incredible, but you've got to think, this is a group of a hundred Taiwanese people in Texas. <laughs> mm. Walking around in all white. And at this point... As polite and as sweet as they are, if anything, they're wearing the white cowboy hat to fit in. And it, there's some Texans who probably think that is sarcastic. Yeah. They'd ride bikes around just dropping flyers around at neighbours' houses. So they'd all wear that exact outfit on a bike and they'd be dropping flyers around. And the tone of the flyers was like, this is why we're here. If you want to join, you can. But it was really polite on the fly. It wasn't like, you need to join us because of the end of the world. It was, this is why we're here. And it was quite apologetic of like, I'm, we're really sorry we're in your space. <laughs> Just, yeah, 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 we know. Like, the world's going to end, but we're sorry we're doing it when yeah. you've got church. Yeah, we're really sorry to encroach in your space. But in a couple of months, your ass getting fucking crushed by a UFO driven by God. <laughs> or Shirley Bassey. <laughs> Some of the neighbours really dislike them. One local complained to the authorities that one of the homes was overcrowded because they moved en masse. There's 150 of them. They bought 21 houses. <laughs> Some of the houses will be overcrowded. They couldn't buy any more. There weren't any more houses for sale. Incredible. So this neighbour went to the authorities and was like, that house is overcrowded. Yeah. And the cult rule was, okay, if you don't own the house... You can't stay in it for very long. So they moved the rest of the followers around. So no house was ever deemed as overcrowded. It was just they had guests around. Right. It wasn't this house has 10 people living in it. It's this house has 10 people in this week. That's and then weird. next week that house has 10 people in. Yeah. Until someone here moves or dies. Yeah. And then we'll buy their fucking house. <laughs> One of the other complaints that came in was from Chen's next door neighbour. Chen's next door neighbour complained because the group were buying a lot of cement and in Chen's backyard, they were building a landing pad for a spaceship. Again, right, so if they think they're all getting on the UFO, right, that's going to be a big spaceship. So how fucking big... Well, how big was his garden? Right, they all got there, though. Uh, how big's their driveways? Yeah. They're pretty rich. They can probably do a decent garden. Yeah, but a garden for a UFO that has like 100 seats in See, it. See, now we're thinking circular UFOs. No one's saying that their UFO, it's a god plane, could go up. <laughs> we could we could be men, uh, We could have an image in our head of a UFO of the spinning woo, 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 woo one, when actually yeah. the one that they're preaching actually is like a skyscraper that goes up. Yeah, I, I am, I'm thinking of like a little disc with a little glass. We're all thinking Mars attacks. That's all anyone thinks UFO-wise. When people came round to check if that is what he was building, Chen rejected the entire idea and told them not what he was building. He said that he was building a gazebo. Now, I've built... I've built the wrong word, I think, first of all, for a gazebo. Assembled? Assembled is the word you yeah. use. And any time I've ever assembled a gazebo, I have never needed any concrete. <laughs> 
early 1998, Chen decided that it was time to self-publish his next book. Oh, what's this one called? Oh, it's as snappy as you'd like it to be. Amazing. Early 1998, Chen self-published God Descending in Clouds, Flying Saucers, On Earth to Save People. <laughs> That's not even a name. That's just, that is the contents of the book, right? That's a four-year-old describing an alien. <laughs> Uh, so is this uh, J.K. Sending clouds, flying saucers, on our soap people. Hey, <laughs> chicken nook nooks. <laughs> so God descending uh, in clouds, flying saucers on Earth to save people. That's a fantastic beast film that's in the works. <laughs> I just, it's one of those where you read it and go, this man can't do sentences. What makes yeah. me think I'm doing chapter three? That poetic thing that I mentioned like very early on, he's lost that by now. Oh, he's gone so mental that he's lost his like literacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything so far does kind of fit with the idea of, oh, I want friends, I want everyone around me, I'll move them all, we'll be safe, we'll all stay here, yeah. we'll get away from the press, if the suicide cult will be in. But that's the thing with America. A big group of UFO cult followers just killed themselves. You moving? You should have left America. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I guess they're like, we will leave when the UFO gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Gillian Anderson. Get her on the phone. She might be able to help. Because if you are a police officer and you are following a UFO call and they actually left on a UFO call, that would be the X-Files. Yeah. <laughs> Not worth it. All right. <laughs> In his new book, he claimed many things. Uh, he claimed that China would attack Taiwan. I mean, sooner than they did. Uh, <laughs> the Korea would unify. You know, he's not smashed all of them. He predicted a Noah's Ark type flood that would lead to Asians committing cannibalism. Oh, like only Asians? Yep. Okay. Well, that's a good way of making sure all of your currently Asian followers in America stay there. Yeah. He also then said that all the countries would join forces to create a war that would bring on the main war that would bring on Armageddon. Q. Spaceship. Everyone yep. living in God's land. Whoop. Yeah. Good times for them. Bad times for the rest. Okay. And that was his claim. He told people not only is God arriving, but this is where I think he made the mistake. He told them when it would happen. Oh, you don't do that. This Your is... entire life is built on lies. You can't then make a claim. You can say that this is going to happen. Yeah. Because we can all say it's going to happen. Yeah. When you say it's going to happen on Tuesday, yeah, that's when it goes wrong. And what Chen did is he told people not only has God arriving, he guaranteed on his life exactly when and what would happen. Chen said that God would appear on TV. Nice. On Channel 18 across North America at 12.01am on the 25th of March, 1998. So... I'm going to guess that God didn't appear on TV. But what I'd love is for this entire cult to tune in on Channel 18 uh, at 12.01. And it's just like a rerun of Supermarket Sweep. One step Dale ahead. Winton is God? Who's Dale Winton? We're American. <laughs> is Dale Winton God? <laughs> that, I, I mean, they could believe it. They're, they're people from Taiwan in America watching an episode of Supermarket Sweep. And my favourite bit about... And watching of... people stealing a load of food, so it's for the UFO. And my favourite bit... Put it all, all in the basket. My favourite bit about all of this and that you've not even asked is why God's appearing on TV. It's, it's also wild that, like, it didn't even cross my mind as to ask why he was on TV, but... <laughs> uh, How many recordings of this podcast have we got to do before you go, you know what, that seemed so believable, I didn't even think to ask. <laughs> <laughs> there was details... That was so intriguing to me that I didn't even think about all of it. But why was he on TV? The reason God was going to appear on TV was to announce his arrival that he would arrive on Earth March 31st. He was doing a wrestling sting of <laughs> appearing next week. God. We mentioned this earlier. I love, this, this cult is built on the world of professional wrestling. <laughs> God's there like, and I'll see you this Sunday. In Godland, Texas, 1201. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see God in Godland, Texas, 
Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. What? <laughs> thy kingdom come. What? <laughs> On earth. What? As it is. What? In heaven. What? <laughs> I'm gonna take little tiny Jesus. I'm gonna take little tiny Buddha. I'm gonna sit them in my UFO. We gonna fly out to outer space. Get out, get out here, yeah. We're gonna get on the god plane, and that's the bottom line, cause God said so. <laughs> <laughs> he said that with God's arrival, 10 a.m., 31st of March, God would appear in Garland, Texas, in human form, and luckily, would look exactly like Chen. Oh, he's finally he's finally lost it. It does help if it looks like him, doesn't it? He's gonna turn up with he's gonna wear those like Groucho Marx like glasses with the little nose and the mustache, like <laughs> Hello, it is me God <laughs> This is where it gets good, Doc. Stay with me for all of this before you decide to tear it to pieces like it deserves to be. Wait, so God's going to be on TV, and when he turns up, he's going to look like Chen. But does he look like Chen on the TV? No. No, he looks like God on the TV. Okay. But when he arrives, Chen said that the God version of Chen would be able to... Walk through walls, replicate himself so he could greet everyone at the same time. He also would be able to speak every language in the world. He says all of this and then starts spreading his book around. This dude is mentally ill. A lonely, a lonely old man. (laughs) He's, he's He's gone insane. This is pure insanity. He's crossed the line of I can lead a group, a group of followers to what I want them to he's do. He's not like so. other cult leaders in the sense of like, he doesn't come across like a raging narcissist. This is just a, my, a man that's just <laughs> been on his own for so long that he's just fabricated this world. It's a, a lot of it for me is it feels like every time he feels his followers are losing interest, there's another big thing to keep them around for a short while. Yes. And it's that friend in school that was, oh, I've got the PlayStation 7. Yeah. Oh, can I play on it? Oh, we'll come around your house. Oh, no, 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 my dad's got it. We'll be back in two weeks. You got back yeah. in two weeks. And he's like, oh, my dad sold it. And then, oh, well, you're a really strange child. And he's like, I've got a bear, though. <laughs> <laughs> cool, can we see the bear? Like, oh, it's on holiday with my dad for a week. Yeah. yeah. That's what he's doing. He's just delaying it constantly. It's like, please don't he's leave. he's not had an older sibling or parent to be like, yeah. don't be a cunt. Look, no, I promise you, it's all right. Look, if, if, if you stick around, we'll get Goldberg in. <laughs> no, I promise. Promise, we'll turn Robin Reigns heel. <laughs> Differences, they did. <laughs> so leading up to March 25th, when God was meant to appear on TV, a large number of people started to turn up in the area. They, they had everyone. They had journalists, tourists. They had people who were just intrigued. They had anti-cult groups. Apparently a couple of Satanists turned up for a laugh. A <laughs> couple of King Satans. King Satans. They're, but they're actual Satanists, not end-the-world King Satanists. Yeah. Just Oh, we'll do some good, but don't believe in organised religion by joining one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chen welcomed everyone. He stood outside. He welcomed the reporters into his yard. He showed off the shrines to the, that the group had built. Um, he allowed them to take pictures of his, I mean, let's call it a gazebo. He went on to claim that the photos that they'd taken had religious power. He claimed... That if you held a picture close to your heart, you would feel the effects of the Holy Spirit. I think that would just be the feeling of the anxiety you get for believing. Such it just a feel, mental concept. Just feel if you're a photographer and you've got to think, everyone, everyone in the press is there because they think they're going to kill themselves. They think that they're a suicide cult. All of the press think they're a suicide <laughs> cult. And this man's like, hold that picture close to your heart, you'll feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, of course, well, thank you very much. Well, it's also like to be alive. a sinister aspect of the press just being like, yeah, but kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do it already. It's so surreal. T- Tuesday, the 24th of March, the members all went into the creek behind Chen's house like money. He's got a creek behind his house. 
They perform some kind of baptism-style ritual. 20 of the male members shave their heads. With so many comparisons to Heaven's Gate and the suicides that happened in that group, the police went round to check what the group would do if God didn't arrive. They even held a press conference telling local people and press that they would work hard to stop any kind of group suicide and promised when the prophecy fails. <laughs> yeah. like, as a police officer, you've got to kind of be like, I mean, if, but your eyes go, when that fails, <laughs> they'll knock on the door and if Chen doesn't answer, they will force entry and ensure that nobody's being harmed. Now, the police are putting a shift in for the first time in American police history, the police are doing their job. <laughs> the only time in American history. For this event, it said that they had around 50 or 70 officers and emergency personnel on standby ready for this event. Incredible. That is a huge amount. Yeah, of people. yeah. Now, when reporters start piling into the town, they start setting up a camp outside the group's home. Now, it said at least 30 news organizations signed up to camp out. Like 100 city employees were working as security for yeah. this. You've also got the outsiders. You've got so many people in this small town in Texas <laughs> where they just had some empty God houses. Land. And 11pm hits and the group walk out of Chen's house and they begin chanting prayers in Mandarin and praying towards his gazebo before returning indoors. Right. Walk out, pray in a language you don't understand, go back inside, and you as a Texan go, my neighbours. <laughs> as midnight hits, everyone in the area, they've got a TV outside, the police have a TV, everyone's watching it. 12 hits, nothing's changing. Not just the court members are watching, everyone's watching. Yeah, because also, America, especially Texas, is very religious itself. So if, if God is appearing on TV, for anyone outside of the cult, they'll also be like, what? Even if it was someone like me who's not like super religious, if someone's like, God's appearing on TV, I don't want to miss that. Now, yeah. And this is late 90s. You've not even got Sky Record or TiVo or whatever. You can't watch it back. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know if Sky would have done that. So, oh, absolutely. God appearing on TV at one minute past 12. So I'm just going to watch it on YouTube the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be there when I wake up. 12.01 hits, it comes round. Everyone's watching Channel 18. Static. Nothing. Not even regular programming. Oh. Channel 18 is down. Literally nothing is on that channel. I don't know. I feel like it would have been more of a, oh, this is bullshit if there was a TV show on and it wasn't God. But the fact it was, there's no programming at this time or whatever would have been showing. That sort of like, maybe he can use that as an excuse. Oh, the feed was down. But I don't feel like God was going through Channel 18's feed. He just chose that as his place. The police gave it until 25 minutes past. The, the police were prepped to storm the house because they're panicked in case of a mass suicide. And they don't want this to happen because God's not arrived. As they're prepped to storm the house, Chen walks out, calm as he's ever been. <laughs> walks out straight up to the front in front of everyone and with his translator, who's been with him for all of it, he said, and his translator <laughs> said in the words I'm about to say, even though God's image was not captured on TV, I want everyone to believe God is alive. Then told every person who was in the room that they could consider his previous statement complete nonsense. <laughs> is he doing reverse psychology on him now? He just tells everyone to ignore what he's just said. Like, oh, I wouldn't believe that. Oh, mate. Bollocks that. <laughs> You've been listening to him. He's shouting <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> he starts holding up pictures, though, of contrails behind planes. And he's like, we have no reason to believe that these are the US Air Force planes. And so I have to stay here and research what these are. Right. So God's going to be on TV. Oh, God wasn't on TV. Oh, but I don't think that's a plane. <laughs> 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 Reporters were confused by his complete U-turn as... As expected they would be. They expect God on TV, a mass suicide, and there's a bloke in front of them going, don't get that from a 747. Yeah. <laughs> the reporters start asking him, no? They, they start asking what they need. No. Is God 
still coming down, dressed as Chen, March 31st. And Chen said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've never heard a man so defeated in my life. Just, oh, he's got going to be there. Ah, it doesn't matter that, does it? <laughs> it, it was asked. <laughs> We've checked the lineup. God might not be on, but you've got Avril Lavigne. So, why... <laughs> Now, the press pushed him for an answer, and he said his, his predictions about God appearing on TV was wrong. His prediction about God appearing on the 31st can also just be considered nonsense. It's almost as if he's just gone, ah, you got me. Yeah, I've had enough now. And that's what I thought. But when he delivered this press conference, his followers were behind it, and his followers stood behind him through all of it. He's saying he's talking shit. And his followers are stone-faced, not saying anything. At one point, he recognised his followers and everything that they'd given up by saying, I personally take responsibility to support them for the time that they were unemployed. Right. He then did finish up his speech by saying, my followers have always enjoyed their freedom and tomorrow they're free to go wherever they want. (laughs) Which, according to him, they always were. Yeah. (laughs) Some of them did very few left. So few left. They stayed with him. As March 31st starts to approach, and the arrival of God, not just the sting, God's arriving. (laughs) But he said it wasn't happening. But he said it was in the past. So some people are still excited, but it's not got the same buzz as it would on TV. On the morning, on the 31st of March, again, police cornered off Chen's place. Press took place outside, and I'm not saying people were taking it less seriously. (laughs) <laughs> but two of his neighbours were stood there in alien costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you've just got to go, yeah, well done. Well, if you know what, <laughs> 20 quid each at the, at the fancy dress shop. That is the best money you've spent this week. They've been to love your babes in the Arndale. <laughs> just, you have worn the two outfits that will be in the press for longer than you want them to be. Yeah. But, I've never been happier that you've done it. Pure entertainment. I love it. On on my list of people I'd love to meet is either of them. <laughs> There's a lot of... I them. want to meet those two more than I want to meet God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like if God was having a laugh, he'd appear on Channel 19. <laughs> At least they'd go a bit of a giggle. <laughs> At that very time, God was on QVC. God's on Channel 18 plus one, just being there. Like, oh, I missed me. <laughs> Just before 10am, when he said God would arrive, Chen steps out again with his translator and he asked everyone to shake their own hand. Okay. And they did. Chen smiled. He said that they were all God. They shook their hand. They could all speak and understand their own language. So God was multilingual and his prophecy was fulfilled. (laughs) Are you going to pull that to pieces before I do? Or... <laughs> you you go ahead. That is it, like... <laughs> that is a man on his final legs just being like, and God was here all along. <laughs> God was inside all of us. He's literally... This, this, is, this is going the way of an episode of a TV show where it was all a dream? What? I didn't burn down the factory. I woke up from my nightmare. Oh, my main issue with all of it, and I think I can answer it, but my answering of it is so bad, I hope it's not his answer for it, and I tried to find it. (laughs) He said God could walk through walls, and I really hope that he didn't walk out of his door to prove that God could walk (laughs) through walls, because the rest of it I'm willing to let slide. That's my issue, is the rest of it I will let slide. Yeah, the, 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 the wall thing. walls is either ignored and he's wrong, or he's claiming that him going through a door is walking through walls, in which case I want him dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love that, that. That has It was so, even in the story, it was so blink and you'll miss it, the wall detail. That, like, it's just fascinating that everything else is so batshit that he can say something like, oh, yeah, yeah, God's, he's going to look like me and he's going to walk through walls. And uh, not once, because there's so many 
stupid details. Not once has someone been like, show us the wall thing, Chan. <laughs> the fact that we've only been discussing it for this long and we got to the wall thing and you went, oh yeah, he mentioned that, didn't he? he mentioned the walls, yeah. <laughs> like, he's done so much. God's going to be on TV announcing his arrival and you go, ding, ding, take that, we'll move on. <laughs> you probably remember something about him being able to shake everyone's hand. And the language, maybe. One fact of oh, that is getting of course, lost yeah. It. He can shake everyone's hand at the same time, so that's why he asked people to shake their own hand. And oh, for God's sake, for Chen's sake, yeah. it's all, nah. he's piecing it to I'll tell you what, for all of his lies and the fact that he's clutching at straws to make all of this make sense and have some sort of truth to it, he is... He's working on those callbacks. <laughs> He's not forgot the details, which is amazing. Like props to him. He's like kept the dream alive. It's very much the rule of if you're gonna lie, lie so big, nobody yeah, yeah. questions it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a man <laughs> who sold God. He's gone out on like live news and said, "Aren't the friends the ones we made along the way?" <laughs> As much as we've had fun with this, you've got to remember, he's just said this to a bunch of reporters. Yep. They've not laughed it off. No. He's just said that his prophecy's fulfilled. They do not believe him. They're not convinced. They're like, prove your God. And Chen decides he's going to. <laughs> By staring at the sun for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right now this is the point where and i know we'll do heaven's gate but there's police officers there going we think they might kill themselves like that last cult and they're now going that weird prick's just staring at the sun <laughs> and it is reported that his eyes were streaming with water whilst he repeatedly was blinking completely just to keep his eyes from burning up because he was staring at the sun for a couple of minutes <laughs> before he then turned back round and went, See? No mere mortal could do that. I've as done that after us, eating a bit of chilli. As if none of us have lived through the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all done it, but we just wait until it wasn't blindingly bright, you thick <laughs> cunt. You've gone from thinking this man is about to murder all 150 people that are with him yeah. to a man <laughs> staring at the sun going, I am God, I am God, I am God. Where's my mum? Please bring my dad back. I wish I had a brother. <laughs> he's such a fucking loser. I love it. Because he's, he's so childish. And he's like, no, I, I, can, I can prove I'm God. What if I... Like, watch me do this kickflip on a skateboard. That's, God, that's God-like, isn't it? <laughs> If you're if you were if you are God, like you could do this, but no one else can do this because I can do it. Watch me, watch me, Slinky. <laughs> um, uh, I can said, yo-yo with two hands. God said that you can't see my bear. Actually, um, I can see my bear. That means God's real. <laughs> Thank you, bear. <laughs> You'd think this would end the grape. It absolutely did not. Shortly after this, Chen had another vision telling him that he had to go to Walcott, New York, and that's where God gets people from the third and fourth dimension. He's got to move on. Where's he got these dimensions from? Well, they're number three and four, along with everything else that he's made up. When, when, do we, uh, did we ever hear about the second dimension? Nope. Fuck's sake, Chen. But why would you hear about the second dimension? That asks questions. You go for three and four, because then no one's like, oh, what's three and four? They ask themselves and not you. He moved on. Um... And to be fair, when he moved to New York, his numbers dropped. His followers dropped by about 70%. You'd think that could be something to do with the fact that he claimed God would be on telly and he didn't turn up. <laughs> and then he stared at the sun. That's He's not, here. <laughs> that's not why his followers didn't turn up. Was it moving again? It was because... Uh, Chen, were, mate, it, I've it, brought four fucking houses in the last five years. It's not even that. The people who followed him were, were on vacation visas. They only had six months in America. Incredible. By the time he moved again, their visas ran out. 70% of his group 
left. He moved to Walcott with 35 members. Considering he predicted God appearing on TV and it not happening, and 35 people still going, yeah, well, I believe, which happens quite a lot. You do get followers who go, well, yeah. if I'm this wrong, I can't go home. Then yeah. I now need this man to come up right because otherwise I look bad. Yeah. The 35 followers are literally doubling down on a bad bet now. Yeah. I'm in too deep now. He's opened a second branch in New York, which worked as a counselling service for the community. He was working with people with AIDS and cancer. Now, I'm well aware of the tone I've just said that. I'm not saying that as in people shouldn't work with these people. I'm saying that as in I know what he was doing. He was going for the vulnerable. He was saying that the source of their disease was spiritual, not physical. Yeah. People that need a fucking miracle, he's going to them. I'm your miracle. Yeah. Fucking Captain Space Cowboy. Mate, like, I know you are suffering with the most debilitating illness, but I stared at the sun for three minutes. <laughs> Have you tried watching Channel 18? I'm sure it'll be there. I'm sure it'll be there. <laughs> and while he was doing this, he allowed high-ranking members of the group to help run it at this stage, including his translator. Right, who... okay. And who has done a lot for letting people like me know his words. Thank you. Chen had a falling out with the high-ranking members of the group in 2002 when Chen got exiled from his own group and they renamed themselves The Great True Way. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to get better than The True Way, The Great True Way. So is have they named it in English words this time? No. I, oh, okay. So translation. So Chen's... Chen Tao is still in there, but they've got extra work. It's like, true way, whatever. Right, you right, right, I get you. But they are now in America, so it may just be called Great True Way. Yeah, yeah. As of 2011, which is as much as I can find on this, it said that the group's still located in Lockport, New York. They've shifted to a much more conventionally Buddhist organisation. So that group, the Great True Way, is still active. They're still maybe there. Um, what happened? Probably Chen? less cult-like than they were with Chen, though. Absolutely, they're just following more Buddhism type st- style of things. Um, what happened to Chen's unknown? <laughs> At this stage, it's genuinely unknown if he's alive or dead. Fascinating. I, I mean, so that's today's story. <laughs> yeah, that's it, isn't it? I told you I'd give you a nicer one. <laughs> I'm happier that this one doesn't end in complete destruction. I do realise I told you I'd give you a nicer one and then referenced a suicide cult the entire <laughs> way through it. None of these are nice, are they? <laughs> Even the ones that like this, where no one in the story died. Well, it maybe Chen did. But of old age, not of cult. Yeah. I hope he's a vampire ghost now. <laughs> I think he was always a vampire ghost. <laughs> well, of of all of, of all the cults that we will talk about, have talked about, this one was the pro- probably the most batshit. And if nothing else, it is the stupidest story you will ever read. Yeah, oh. I think it's the fact that it doesn't end up going like really dark and sinister that makes this one so stupid. It was just a man lying through his teeth and it got, it just got way too far. (laughs) If someone would have called him out in 1993. Mate, no. (laughs) But he he was that kid at school that would just lie through his teeth. But everyone around him just seemed to be like, oh yeah, tell me more. I told someone I was the under nine tennis champion once. (laughs) When I was 12. Thank you for listening to Cult Comedy Pod. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Cult Comedy Pod. And we'll be back next week with another episode.